Is Pokemon Platinum really that good? People say it's the best way to play Gen 4 games, even to this day, but does it live up to the hype? Pokemon Platinum released in Japan on September 13th, 2008, and on March 22nd, 2009 in North America. This was the third game to take place in the Sinnoh region, following Pokemon Diamond and Pokemon Pearl. Now, Diamond and Pearl had a lot of issues, and even though they were the best-selling Pokemon games on the console, fans had mixed reviews of whether these games were good or not. So Pokemon did what they do best, and they released Platinum to try and fix as many of these issues as possible, and they did a pretty good job. Some fans will say that this is the best game in the Pokemon series, but I'm here to find that out. Pokemon Platinum did a good job, and it really feels like an enhanced version of Diamond and Pearl. Before playing Platinum, I played through Diamond and Pearl, and I didn't remember how painfully slow it was. If you own a copy of Diamond and Pearl, please go put it in your DS and try a battle and see how long it takes. Pokemon Platinum felt so much faster, and it's so refreshing not have to spend three months in every single battle. I remember picking this game up as a kid and noticing how much faster it was, but now that I'm playing it again, it's still really slow when you compare it to the likes of black and white. Don't get me wrong, any improvement is nice but it's still super slow looking back. The early game in Pokemon Platinum starts just like it did in Diamond and Pearl, where you're jumped by a gaggle of Starly and have to pick between Chimchar, Piplup, and Turtwig. These starters have always been some of the best in the entire series, and I love how each of them can counter one another easily. The early routes in this game are way more fun than I remember. You have Pokemon like Shinx, Starly, and Badoo that can fill your team up immediately. The game is full of nostalgic music and great Pokemon. The only issue I have in the early game is that if Barry runs into me one more time, I'm gonna pick him up and throw him down a flight of stairs. As it seems to be the trend in a lot of the early games, the first gym is a rock-type gym, and is an absolute cake walk regardless of what starter you pick. One thing I noticed throughout this playthrough is that the gym leaders in Elite Four all use Pokemon that are part of their type, and that's something that needed to change from Diamond to Pearl. After the first gym, you're introduced to Team Galactic, and you start to begin the story of the game. Team Galactic is led by Cyrus, and they want to reshape the entire Pokemon universe to be under their control. Your job throughout the story is to thwart them wherever you can and make sure that they have a terrible time. I didn't remember that this game introduced Looker to the series, and it was really nice to get to run into him. Just like in every Pokemon, the early game was kind of slow and works to build the story of Team Galactic, and Platinum did a much better job of doing that than Diamond and Pearl. You're introduced to Cyrus so much earlier, and it makes me have a much better connection to Team Galactic as a whole. One thing that did impress me was the art style of this game. Even though it's not my favorite art style, which goes to black and white, this is a close second. All of the sprites look so good and the moves look way better than I remember. As you progress through the story and beat more gyms, you unlock more and more HMs and I forgot how much I hated them. Having to dedicate a specific Pokemon to being your HM slave is really frustrating. And having to have that Pokemon on you at pretty much all times just for traversal's sake is annoying. I'm really glad the modern games in the series have gotten rid of this mechanic. You can make it so getting around doesn't require a certain Pokemon to know that move. I will say that Bibarel really came in clutch and was on my team from the beginning and took the role of HM Slave perfectly. Even though getting around was annoying, the Sinnoh region was still awesome to go back to. Places like Eterna City have some of the best music in the entire series, and every time I went into a new area, I just felt myself getting hit with wave after wave of nostalgia. The one thing that I expected to enjoy more than I did was the story. I feel like the pacing of this game just needed some work. The story of this game is really good, but I feel like the reason that I didn't enjoy it as much is because I knew what to expect and the pacing just left me feeling underwhelmed toward the end of the game. The reason I say this is because the climax with Team Galactic happened, and then I still had to face the 8th gym. Walking into the last gym with the Pokemon equivalent of Satan makes it feel like something is missing in the story. The story did have me really engaged at times though, specifically in the distortion world. I feel like this is exactly what was missing in Diamond and Pearl. This little area was creepy and mysterious, and it was the perfect world to have Giratina come from, and to be able to explore it was even better. Being able to run on walls and find invisible pathways was so engaging, and it makes the climax of the game something so special. Battling Cyrus in the Distortion World was one of my favorite fights in all of Pokemon. Now, it's not even the best fight in this game, but I still feel it was a really great way to end the main story of this game. I just really wish that the game had me go right to the Elite Four after beating the main story, so I didn't have to fight an entirely separate gym beforehand. Having the eighth gym come after left me wanting more story to fill the gap, and I didn't get that. I feel like it would have been way better if they pushed the main story back just a little bit until after the 8th gym and then had those events, that way the flow works a lot better. On another note, unlike Diamond and Pearl, this game actually had a great selection of Pokemon for your journey. You also get Magmar, Houndor, and Flareon. 
Pokemon listened to their fans and allowed more Pokemon to be usable, and it made it so you can build the team that you really enjoy. And the game's regional evolutions are really good, and the regional Pokemon that they added are some of the best to this day. I mean, look at this big tooth boy right here. Look at him. After struggling my way through Victory Road, the Elite Four in this game were way more fun than I remember them being. Aaron, Bertha, Flint, and Lucian were all challenging, and I felt like I was actually struggling for a bit at certain points, and I don't get to do that in modern games. And don't even get me started about Cynthia. Most Pokemon fans will agree that this is one of the best fights in the series, and she's hands down the best champion. Having such a balanced team and having them decently high level was something that I didn't remember being as challenging, but I definitely should have. I'm really glad that I had Frostlass on my team to destroy that Garchomp at the end, because if I didn't, I don't think I would have made it very easily. After I beat the Elite Four, I even checked out the Battle Frontier, which I entirely forgot was in this game. Now this was far from the best post game in the series, but it actually has a post game unlike Diamond and Pearl. And being able to re-challenge any gym leader after the Elite Four is something that was really nice and refreshing. Having any kind of post game was super nice because Diamond and Pearl was extremely lacking in that front. After beating the Elite Four, I kept picking up the game to play the Battle Frontier, and I didn't expect to want to do that. I really enjoyed my time with Pokemon Platinum, and if you haven't played it in a while, I highly recommend you go back and check it out. I can definitely say that this game impressed me more than I thought it would. Would I go as far to say it's one of the best games in the series? That, I'm not sure. I definitely enjoyed playing some of the other games in the series much more than this. Games like Heart Gold and Soul Silver and the Black and White series are just more engaging. I can say that this game definitely lives up to the hype, but it's definitely not the best game in the series. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. I hope you and your family have an incredible day, and I hope you consider subscribing.